Okay, this is uh, what I just proved. And uh, let's take some corollaries. First, I already mentioned this, uh, K u equals g has the least square solution or um, uh, also a minimum norm solution if and only if g is in the range of k plus the kernel of ka joint which is the same as the range of k plus the range of k perp. Okay, uh, second, um, you might ask how many uh, elements in uh, Y actually do have a, um, um, a least square solution? Now it's not as bad as you might fear. We have that range of k plus the range of k perp. Closure of this is of course the same as the range of k closure plus the range of k where perp is already closed. Now, this is the same as y. So, uh, the set of all g for which ku equals g has a least square solution is at least dense in y, so um, it's really quite a lot. Okay, um, let u and v, two least square solutions, then uh, due to one of the characterizations, we have that k star k times u is g, uh, which is also k star k times v. Um, so that obviously means that the scalar product of k star k u minus v with u minus v is zero because the first part is already zero. But uh, this is exactly the same of as k u minus v, scalar product with k u minus v, which means that k u minus v is zero. So that means that the difference between the two elements is in the kernel in the null space of K. So um, that means that two least square solution um, are different in a way um, that uh, the difference between two, uh, two least square solutions is always in the kernel. Okay, uh, of k. Now, what else? Uh, yeah, that's also something I already mentioned. Um, the set of all least square solution is convex and closed. And uh, using the theorem I had in the last lesson, if it is um, non-empty, the norm minimum is unique. So that means that uh, the minimum norm solution, which I will write like this, minimum norm solution 
exists and is unique. Okay. Then the last thing I would like to mention, and more or less you know this already from numerical linear algebra as well, because it's exactly the same thing in finite dimensional vector spaces. If there is a least squares solution, which of course means that G is in the corresponding space, then we have that U is minimal norm solution is equivalent to, first of all, yeah, it has to be a least square solution. And U is in the closure of K adjoint. Now, why is that? Well, um, we already know that there, uh, since this is um, a least squares solution, oh no, let V be a minimum, the uh, minimum norm solution, which exists because uh, we have a least square solution. So according to number four, there is a unique minimum norm solution. So let's take this. And let's, v, let's write V in the following way. We write it as U plus a U tilde. And uh, this should be the projection onto the range of A adjoint closure. And uh, yeah, well, U tilde is then an element in the uh, in um, yeah, some th then uh, this is this is ah oh, yeah then um, this is orthogonal to the range of a adjoint excuse me now uh, and of course also the closure adjoint well we have the perp anyway so it doesn't matter. Now, uh, this is nothing due to the characterizations that we had. This is nothing but the kernel of A, the null space of A. OK, um, so since V is a minimum norm solution, it's also a least square solution. So we have that A star G is the same as A star AV. And uh, well, this is the same as A star AU plus uh, A adjoint A U tilde, but uh, U tilde is in the null space of A. So uh, that goes away. And we have that A, uh, the adjoint of G is the same as the adjoint applied to AU. And of course, this should all be Ks. I'm sorry. Now, uh, so that means that U is a least square solution as well. So this is a least square solution. And um, now uh, let's look at the norm of V. That's the same as, uh, well, since uh, U and U tilde are orthogonal to each other, again, with Pythagoras, we have this is the same as norm U squared plus the norm of U tilde squared. But this can only be, uh, now U is a least square solution and uh, V is uh, the smallest least square solution. That is only possible if the norm of U tilde is zero. So that means that V is equal to U, or that means that uh, V is the projection of V onto the range of A adjoint, which means that V 
is in the range of K adjoint. Okay, um, I will always for for the final PDFs that I download, I will uh, also that I upload, um, I will always correct these a little bit. So uh, this will hopefully look a little bit nicer when you use it to compare uh, with the video. And uh, since I was a little bit longer on Monday, um, and since I now be starting a new chapter on compact operators anyway. I'll stop at this point. We'll meet on Monday and I will give you an overview of compact operators. Have a nice weekend.